This is Wilson Morales from BlackFilm.com talking to the director Ama Asante for her upcoming film, Belle. How excited are you that it's finally coming out? Do I look at you or in there? You look at here. <laughs> um, I'm ridiculously excited, uh, but I'm also really, really nervous um, that the film is coming out. It's been a long time in the making. And, you know, you, you have to put your baby out there on its own legs and you have to let it walk and you have to let it have its own relationship with the world. It's a bit scary. Now, there's a lot of stories in here from romance to history to slavery. As a director, what were the challenges of just making sure all of the stories gelled together? Well, as a director, um you know, interweaving all of those stories and making sure that there was a balance, making sure that um, the elements that needed to punch through, punch through at the right time, was was tough. I mean, it, it was a big challenge. Also, we were we were um, shooting in the the fall when in England light is short, um, and so you know that that shortened our kind of schedule time. So you had to be sure that you shot enough story each day. That once I got to the edit. I was going to be able to have enough story to balance all the stories, you know, that one story wouldn't take too much prominence when it wasn't supposed to. Um, so, you know, the edit, it, it was a period of, of distilling everything in the edit and, and then watching the movie over and, and, and working out whether it punched where it needed to, when it needed to, in the way that I wanted it to, in the way that I intended it to. You know, when I saw that postcard print, immediately of the painting what I saw was the uh, uh, the possibility that I could create a, a, a movie you know create a film that combined politics history and art and and that's just the beginning of what Bell is um, thematically there are so many themes involved and yeah it was a challenge timing is everything and I know this is not a film that was put together last year, it's been some time in the making. Do you believe because of last year's, uh, you know, 12 Years a Slave and, and the, the topics that this is the right time for this movie to come out? Yes, um, I believe so. But I mean, this really sits within the context of a, a kind of Austin-esque period drama as well. So it, it isn't just fitting into the context of movies about slavery. It's also fitting into the context of a certain kind of period drama. And, you know, there has to be enough clear water, in a sense, between the last one um, before the next one can kind of come out, if that makes any sense. So I, I think our challenge was more about being a period drama and, and and whether it was right the right time to make another British period drama than it was um, to make another film about slavery. We were filming at the same time as Twelve Years a Slave, um, and I didn't know about Solomon's story, so you know I had no idea um, of the comparisons that might be made. Um, and learned about them afterwards, but but I, I think this is more about fitting into the context of period, a period piece rather than um, necessarily its, its kind of political significance. As you mentioned, period piece, Jane Austen's, were there any pitfalls you wanted to avoid? So it doesn't seem very similar, but in a way, similar in a way? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this movie needed to be both familiar and unfamiliar in the same way that I wanted Dido's character, uh, Gugu's character Dido, to be both familiar to the audience and unfamiliar. You know, we've seen her before, but wow, not as a woman of colour and not in this way. And so, yes, there were pitfalls. You know, this is a movie about slavery, but uh, let's not be under any illusions. You do not see a slave in the movie. We talk about slavery and we talk about a very historic, important case that... That, that took place at, at the time, which is uh, that of where over 100 slaves were thrown overboard and killed, murdered for insurance money, but you never actually see one. And that is because, you know, for me, I wanted to pay homage um, um, to the victims of, of, of that particular case and the victims of slavery, uh, but, but, but within the context of um, the Jane Austen subgenre, if you like. Now, I thought about that subgenre and I thought, w w would you ever have seen a slave? No, you wouldn't. And yet, this genteel world was being held up by the financing that slavery brought to England. So it was important to be able to parallel the two worlds, but really stay true to the subgenre of movie I was making. We've seen Google on TV shows and in a few films. What made her be the right choice for this movie? And then bringing Sam Reed. We don't see him that often. He's new. And then putting the both of them opposite veterans like Penelope and Tom and Miranda. 
you know, when I again saw the painting, I realized the opportunity that I, I could have to create a film where I could put um, a, a black female, a woman of color, front and center. Um, and so um, casting Gugu was easy because I fell in love with her. She understood the kind of story that I wanted to tell. She understood the focus that I wanted to bring to the story. She understood the themes that I was creating for the story of gender, race, class. Um, she understood that I wasn't trying to tell a simple story where it's about colour, but that, that, that it's complex at that time. I wanted to create the parallels between slavery and gender and, you know, women and slaves and, 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 and all of that at that time. Um, and she got the story. She has an, an innate sense of elegance, which is so right for the period. Um, she's intelligent as well as beautiful. And that was perfect for the film. With Sam Reed, he came in with a passion to play John and to be a part of this story. He got it. He understood uh, the importance of this story to me, why I um, you know, had created the characters in the way that I'd created them, told the story in the way that it's told. And he wanted to be a part of that. And his drive was infectious. Um, he also ain't too hard on the eye. And um, he made a great match for um, Gugu. Um, Again, aesthetically, looking at them together, they make a great match. Now, John de Vignier in real life was 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 the man who who Dido chose to marry, and you know they had a great romantic life. They christened each of their children in the church that they were married in. That's so romantic, and um, I felt that John could um, that Sam playing John could both bring the the passion that was required, but also and uh, and you sort of the the political. Um, motivation, if you like, that was required for his character, but also the romantic love story element. He was gentle enough to to fulfil that love story element, and it was always my dream to to bring a rising star to the fore um, in the form of a woman of colour, place her front and centre of this movie, call it Belle, and um, surround her with great British thespians who could raise her. Um, who could who could lift her up um, to to attain and help her attain her greatest potential? So having people like Tom Wilkinson, Miranda Richardson, and Emily Watson, Penelope Wilton, um, who are equal all equal loves of my life, where I was a natural. You know, these were my muses while the development period was was going, and while the, we were creating the story and deciding what story should be told, they were my first choices, and we got them. So. As a director, and obviously this is a big project for you, who is your guidance? You know, every day you, have, you probably have to go back and say, can I do this again tomorrow? You know, and unlike, you know, it's not like you had like five films under your belt where you got it. This is a big project for you. So at one point or another, did you have any jitters or, or did you have fine guidance? Um, well, um, I have mentors in the industry like Ken Loach. Um, who I can shoot an email to if I have any concerns or worries about something that's happening to me. Um, my husband was, uh, of course, Soren, was an, a, an incredible support to me during um, the making of the movie, um, on the days where I felt like, oh my God, can, um, can I really get through this next day? I'm so mentally and physically tired or I'm worried about how this is going, how this is working, am I getting the performances I need and want? You know, he was always there day and night. Um, I, uh, of course, my sister, who is, was an ex-makeup artist and retired from um, makeup artistry many years ago, uh, came out of retirement to um, shoot some um, night shoots with us when we were doing working with lots of supporting artists and um, some extras and needed extra help. And so she was there some of the time and I would uh, go away for secret hugs with her and, and she would give me the extra push that I needed. Um, and you, the, the key, the biggest one, my father was um, very ill during the making of the film. He died before we finished completing the movie the movie is dedicated to him um, but in the movie in the way that you you hear uh, Matthew Good's character telling the young girl you know know that you are loved um, m my father would tell me that very regularly as a young girl um, the, the love that he gave me and he instilled in me um, and the 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 ability to be strong and tenacious um, stayed with me despite the fact that um, 
you know, watching your father die is, is the worst thing that can happen to you ever, let alone when it happens to you while you're trying to make the movie of your life. Um, but, but I think his love and the strength that he gave me, I would just refer back to it and I would always say, what would dad say? What would daddy say in this situation? And, and I, thankfully I had enough life with him that I could, I could answer that question. At the end of the day, this is a political story, this is a romantic story. What do you want audiences to walk away with after they've seen the film? If there's anything you want them to pinpoint on, what would that be? I want them, you know, what I want audiences to think when they walk away from the film, uh, first of all, I hope that they won't think, what are we going to eat now? I hope that they will still be talking about the film long after, that it will be resonating with them long after they've seen it. But I, what I hope that they walk away with is the, uh, the, the, the thought, the concept of look what we can do when we're courageous. Look what human beings can do when we just have the courage to do it. When we don't conform to what society is expecting us to do or telling us to do because society is wrong some of the time when we don't conform to what the establishment is forcing us to do or telling us to do that we stand up when we know something is wrong we stand up for the truth and that we're courageous in doing that it's not easy to go against the tide of tradition it's not easy to go against your peers and what everybody else is saying at the time but what Lord Mansfield did with with the love of Dido as his daughter was stand up for what was true and what was right and to do that he had to be pretty courageous look what we as human beings can do when we have courage all right, we're good to go. Thanks. Thank you.